course contents, the reference books as well as uh, the examination which is uh, nothing unique as per the institute norms. So, let us start our discussion on you know because uh, the geotechnical engineering is basically uh, the mechanics of soils all right so it so happens that this is the material and the mechanics you are aware of all of you have studied Fluid mechanics, you have done any course or not yet? You're still, you are doing this semester, already finished, very good. So, you have done fluid mechanics, you have done solid mechanics, you have done engineering mechanics. So, mechanics nothing but the tools which we are using to understand the response of the material. And in this case, it so happens because we are talking about the geotechnical engineering, our material is going to be either soils or rocks. All right. Now, there is a very inter interesting interplay between the soils and the rocks. So, it is a good idea to understand what is the origin of the material. All right. All of us have some heritage. All right. We belong to some place, linkage, and so on. So, the origin is the first question, how soils were formed. So, in today's discussion, I will be focusing on how soils as a material which is going to be used by civil engineers, particularly geotechnical engineers, all right, for various applications. So, the materials part is either soils and rocks and then I would like to see what forms what rocks might form soils which is a normal process, but it might so happen that soils might also form rocks. I hope you are aware of this, is it not? So, it is a reversible process, parents definitely they give you know they create offsprings. Sometimes it might happen that the offsprings might also create something which is look alike parents. So, we will talk about the origin, how the origin of the soils has occurred. In the process, we will also try to define what this material is. We will try to define the material soils, all right. The most important characteristic of this material is it gets formed by some process and then it gets either transported or it remains at that place only what is known as residual. Now, this is what is normally known as formation. Okay. So, the first thing is origin, before that comes how to define this material, how the formation of the soil occurs. And this is where we will talk about several issues like conditions of formation. Now, formation is a very deceptive term, all right, it is an incomplete term. It might so happen that the formation could be, you know, a strata itself is also known as formation. So, suppose if I say that this is the ground level, normally we define the soil surface like this. This is what is known as geomicrobiosphere. So, anything which is 
existing below the ground level is our domain all right so this is the domain in which lot of geo is earth and in this system there could be microbial activity there could be different type of activities which might be taking physics might be occurring physical chemical and the logical thermal and what not so if i say that the whole strata is stratified strata is plural and stratum is singular so each of this layer if i say layer all right number 1 number 2 number 3 and so on unless you hit the mantle or the core these are all the layers layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 all right so the strata is the entire thing the stratum is layer now as i was saying the formation could be connoting to please remember these few words in the beginning of the course then our language becomes same and i hope you will not have any difficulty later on so if i want to define the layer number 1 this is the formation clear now you must have realized you know somewhere here we have hills you know himalayas and somewhere down the geographical line this is you know this would be let us say Hooghly and I hope you understand why I am drawing this. This is the journey which the entire system is going to traverse, traverse means travel. What is going to happen here because of various activities this system is going to get fragmented. Those of you who might have gone for trekking in Himalayas or the hilly terrains you must be realizing a lot of boulders big big piece of the you know rocks they keep coming out. So that is one process which is what is known as weathering we will discuss about this later on. So it so happened that the big chunks of the rocks they get detached from the parent body by some process it could be physical take a hammer start hammering it the system gets you know converted into small small pieces there could be a chemical weathering taking place all right because of the chemical actions and this could be the fundamental property of the soils or rocks there could be a combination of the two there could be a thermal activity which might be occurring over here temperatures go very high and the system develops thermal stresses, cracks develop when the rains come all these cracks get filled up with water and these boulders start rolling down all right. So this is what actually we are going to talk about so formation includes how ultimately traveling from point number A to somewhere in the plains you know what are plains Gangetic plains. So those of you who are from uh, the central portion of India, Delhi, UP, Uttarakhand, or not Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand still goes into the hilly terrain. So these are the plain areas where the slopes of the uh, you know ground are not much. And then ultimately what happens this thing over comes over and gets into a ocean. Is this okay? So this whole journey A to B to C we are trying to capture, 2, 3 things which are very important, how the fragments get formed, in other words how the soils get formed, what is causing them to come from A to B, this is what is known as a transportation agency. So formation is going to depend upon the cause, you know and this cause is going to be mostly weathering and this weathering could be either physical, chemical, it could be even microbial alright. Sometimes people also call this as a biological.
and this could be the combination of x, y and z as well. So, this is as far as the formation is concerned. The second term which we will be going to include which we are going to introduce would be uh, what causes soils and how they get transported. So, in your opinion what are the transporting agencies which you might be aware of which would move the fragmented portions of the rocks from A to B and B to C. Very nice. So, transporting agencies would be either water, yes, in most of the cases this is water, sorry, rains, winds, air. Nice, good. Next, sorry, very good. It could be gravity, yes, why not? What else? So, it so happens that something detaches over here because of the weathering action. So, weathering is nothing but disintegration. This causes disintegration. All right. Is this part clear? Are you realizing the material with which you are going to work? Is this okay? So, it depends upon all these things. It is a big matrix water, air, gravity, anything apart from this which might be transporting agency. Sorry? Living organisms will not transport the soil, their role is different. So, living organisms, what you are trying to connote to is microbial activity. That is responsible for creating the weathering process or disintegration of the rocks. Fine. I, I mean, I cannot justify your answer. So, anybody else? You think that living organisms, yeah, human beings, if you are saying, then yes, that is possible. We are the biggest culprit. Is this okay? So, mostly you know have you have water, you have air, you have gravity, you have human activities. Another interesting thing over here is, see it is a very intelligent material, soils. We will talk about this later on, why it is so intelligent, because simple answer is it gives rise to, it gives rise to the entire, what do you call it, life. Is this correct or not? Life originates from soils. So, we talk about the cause, we talk about the transportation agencies, there are few materials which get disintegrated, but unfortunately they cannot get transported. So, we talk about deposition characteristics. And normally we term them as residual. Which one is going to be more experienced, more knowledgeable, more workable? All adjectives which you can think of you should attribute to this. A person who stays all the time in his or her home or the one who comes out, travels, meets people, takes his or her own decisions. There is a lot of similarity between what we are studying and what I just said. Look at the process, they were formed somewhere because of some external agencies, fragmentation took place. The second thing came in the picture, transportation. It carried the material up to a certain distance and this distance could be geological distance of few thousands of kilometers. Agreed? So, in the process what is going on? All these agencies are giving lot of rubbing effects, abrasive effects. So, you must have seen when you go to the Himalayas, you know big, big boulders are lying over there. But as you come down towards let us say Kanpur, Varanasi, 
Gaia and all these areas, what happens? All these big boulders have got converted into small particles, sands, clear? Yeah? So, this in this process of grinding, the type of grinding which you are going through at IIT Bombay, what is happening? You are becoming more knowledgeable or no? Whatever it is. So, you are getting exposed to different type of environmental conditions. Is this correct? So, a system which gets transported because of the transporting agencies keeps everything in its memory. So, it is not a inert material, it is not a dead material, it is a very intelligent and live material, alright. This is another attribute of the soils. So, this is memory based. And no wonder why silica is used as a basic ingredient for designing chips. No, because the basic constituent of the entire thing is silica. So, we will talk about this memory effects in the material, all right. I will be using this term quite a lot. What is memory of the material? I mean, there is no other intelligent material like soils in the history of civilization. Still, do you really talk about the memory effect? Do you talk about how it was formed? Do you talk about how it was deposited? You know, how it is going to behave? How it is going to react? No, we do not use these terms at all. So, that is the difference and that is why it becomes very important to study the mechanics of the soils. Is this part clear? So, we will talk about all these things. Coming to the second thing which I was talking about the depositional characteristics, how the deposition is taking place whether the soils are residual or they are transported. So, I was giving a logic, the guy who never came out of the house, he was born in the same house, alright, attained youth in the same house and became a big person in the same house and is also going to die in the same house, so, something of this sort, residual. Residual means the disintegration took place over here. Unfortunately, there was no transporting agency. Transporting agency is nothing like teachers like us who might be carrying you along with us to some destination. Is this okay? And then, depending upon your fate, you may get deposited somewhere. You may settle down in a profession. Clear? So, this is what the depositional characteristics are. There are few guys who remain in their profession for 20 years like me, 25 years, 30 years. They might be getting rotten. And there are another breed of the people who keep on changing their jobs every now and then. Another similarity, are you getting this point? So, these guys are going to have a very different type of characteristics and memory in their brains. So, this is a very interesting thing which we can use for designing our structures when we are dealing with the systems which are either transported or which are residual. Is this part okay? Because what is my job? My job is to put all of you in order. I told you 2 o'clock means 2 o'clock, everybody is there. So, I am going to dictate tomorrow with this material as well as with this material, look this is how you have to behave because I am a technologist, I am an engineer. I want you to behave like this. Are you getting this point? And that is what the engineering is all about, that is what the technology is all about. So, I have a material, clear? I would like to dictate with it, how? I have to use the principles of mechanics which is nothing but the physics and mathematics put together, tools, understand? And in the process, all this happens. Ask any question. I think I have given you the preface of today's discussion. Rest is all bookish. If it is not clear, please discuss. So, this is the preface of today's discussion. Anything which you like to add? So, suppose somebody asks you a question, introduce yourself, you were asking something last week, you remember, down the staircase. So, suppose somebody says, introduce yourself, how would you introduce yourself? This is the introduction of the material, clear? Now, make it a habit, wherever you go in life, today onwards, Google where you are, what type of soil deposits are available there, you will learn lot of things. And if possible, make it a habit to collect some samples also. System retains what has happened in the past, alright. 
So, the memory is what? When you came here, you were carrying some imprints of what happened in your childhood, alright. So, when we talk about the engineering issues associated with the material, we will talk about what the material carries in its mind, clear. And based on that, it has a tendency to behave, to exhibit its response. Sir, my name is Ankit. Ankit, yeah. Sir, how microbial weathering takes place? Okay. That's an interesting thing. I think you should search it out on Google, read some papers if you are really interested. What microbes produce? Any idea? Microbes in soils produce gases and these gases could be hydrocarbons, agreed? So, imagine a system is like a control volume where there is a lot of organic matter. I do not know, I, I should not have introduced this word right now, but I am introducing, you can capture all these things. So, this is organic matter, alright. So, wherever the organic matter is, the bacterial activity is going to harp. So, this is the bacteria inside and what this bacteria is going to do? Organic matter provides nutrition, carbon, nitrogen, sulphur, alright, hydrogen, oxygen and so on. Now, what is going to happen? You have provided enough food to the bacteria, what is going to do? It is going to be active. What it does? It eats up the material, disintegration started. It is a microbial or <coughs> biological disintegration of the material, deterioration of the material, clear? Lot of R&D is being done in this context and those of you who are interested in going for higher studies should note these words carefully. Geotechnical engineering has lot of potential for R&D both in the industry as well as in academics. So, my emphasis is to give you more ideas about what is happening in the world today rather than bookish knowledge, alright. So, is this part clear? So, what microbes do? They try to eat up the system. At the same time, they might create the system also. So, they act both ways. So, they may deteriorate or they may upgrade any system. A good example of this is, please go and check in on the net, MICP, these are all research ideas. So, this is a very interesting area in which lot of research is being done in the area of uh, geotechnical engineering, soil mechanics, microbial activity and just check it on the net. Is this okay? So, what bacteria does is one of these processes. If this is happening, I should not bother. But if this is happening, the system follows the chain this onwards, correct? So, this is the microbial disintegration, fine. I just wanted to provoke your thoughts. What humans are doing? I want to create a Taj Mahal in Bombay. Antilia. From where I brought all the materials, geomaterials, from somewhere in the mines of Rajasthan, clear, or let us say from Orissa or some south, you know, there are a lot of stones which are available in Kadappa region. So, humans also transport the material. A beautiful example of this would be reclamation. So, most of the islands which are being created all over the world. How many islands have been created in the last 2-3 years? Look at the geography of the, of the world, it is not stationary. You know when we were kids, we used to use the same book for 30 years, the atlas. Now, what is happening? Atlas keeps on changing every month, <coughs> yesterday something has happened. It is a good example, no? So, what has happened? The geography is going to change. So, South China Sea, what is happening? China is expanding. Next time when you go to Singapore, when you are landing, just sit on the seat number A or last one H and peep down, what you will see? A lot of activity going on in the ocean. What do they do? They bring soils from different places, they dump them over there and they are creating islands. You got the answer to your question? So, humans are also becoming extremely 
notorious in transporting the soils, but this is how the civilization is. How many islands India has constructed in last 5 years? All strategic, check it on net, you understand? So, the geographical boundaries are changing, why? Because it is my wish, I would like to bring material from somewhere and dump it somewhere. The same process I am following, look at this. The material was created by human activity by mining. I brought it in the barges or by the pipelines or whatever. I transported it and I deposited it. Agree? So, what nature was doing in millions of years, I have done it in 5 years, 10 years. Palm Islands, Pearl Islands, World Islands, these are beautiful examples of creation of land. Okay? So, human activity is associated let us say with the land reclamation. Search it out more yourself about this thing. This itself is the formation of rock. Shall I add man made? This is okay. Microbially induced calcite precipitation. Now, because of this, what is coming out of the bacterial secretion, the system gets upgraded, formation of rock takes place. I can use it for my different applications. Very good, good question. Yes. Sir, how a chemical can be how? used? How, can the chemical Suppose if I go somewhere on the hilly terrains and I carry say 100 liters of sulfuric acid, concentrated 5 molar sulfuric acid and I will pour it on the system, what is going to happen? Chemical interaction clear? So, you are adding something chemically to create disintegration or weathering of the material clear? So, this could be by hammering as I said physical, it could be chemical, you add some chemical compounds in it. Have you ever seen any blasting which was done yes. in any of the projects, you know, in the rocks? So, what do they do? They drill holes, they put chemicals and then they wait for 24 hours and what happens? Room, clear? The rock becomes this disfragmented. It is a chemically induced weathering of rocks for making highway projects. Is there any natural chemical phenomena, phenomena of uh, weathering? Good question. Have you heard about arsenic oozing out of soils in the western eastern part of the country? This is one of the chemical processes which might be bacteria driven. If you see any acid uh, acid rain pH it will be less than 4. No, but go to the genesis industrialization and too much of industrialization means that most of your industries are emitting socks, knocks, cocks. So, all these things will in the environment and then what happens? So, when clouds forms these uh, gases will also get trapped inside the clouds. Okay. So, when it starts precipitating uh, rains, precipitation means rains. Rains, when it starts precipitating that sulfur, sulfur dioxide, NOx, uh, I mean nitric oxide, anything will get mixed with water and it will turn it into acid. Weak acid. Yes. Weak acid. Yes, weak okay. acid. So, it will get precipitated on the rocks like if for suppose such kind of rain happens in, in the region of Himalayas. So, the kind of uh, chemicals that were precipitated over there might uh, try to might trigger the this disintegration of the rocks. Correct. Any other example which comes to your mind? Is this okay? You have understood? Acid rains are a good example of how uh, human activities are going to create more and more chemical weathering of the system including the buildings which you have constructed. So, let us start now with the conventional discussion. Let us say, how to define soils? You will be surprised to know that this is a material which has several definitions. You know why? So, everything is a material. So, when I say define soils, you say oh, this boy is not very good, very casual remark. Oh, he is excellent, he is a 10 pointer, whatever. You say like this, you define a person 
by using some attributes. In this case, what happens is most of the attributes are a function of, so it so happens that these functions, these are the functions of the profession. You understand? It is such an interesting material. What is the meaning of this? What is your name? Say your name at least. Ashish. Sorry? Why you cannot follow my words or what? So, the definition of the material depends upon the attributes which are profession dependent. How would you complete this statement? Depending on uh, what the soil is used for, we assess the properties, the function of the soil. Not the function of the soil, I said the definition of the material depends upon the attributes and one of the attributes is the profession in which you are. What is your hobby? What do you do? I like reading novels. Apart from that? Poetry. Poetry. Apart from that? So, suppose if you were a pottery maker, there are many people who do sculptures, is it not? How would you define soil? By the way, most of my research on cracking characteristics of soils, you know, my guru was the guy who came for mood indigo who was doing your pottery making. I called him in the lab and then after that I might have guided I do not know 2, 3 PhDs and several papers which I have written on cracking characteristics of soils. And my question to him was that why your pots do not crack? Because this is the answer which BCCI was looking for and I was a consultant to BCCI, I hope you are aware of. Before 2011 World Cup, I made their pitches, I gave them a recipe. So my big question in the mind was that let me create pitches which will never crack. Of course, the spinners will not be very happy with me. So why I am telling you this is, this story is because if I am in this profession, what would I like? I would not like any system to crack. But just now what I had said, if I am creating pitches, a spinner would like pitch to crack in the third hour of the match. Why? Then we have so many in our team who will go and finish the game in two days. You are getting the point? So what, I, what twist I have given? The material is defined by the attributes which are mostly dependent upon the profession. So you might be a potter, a sculptor or you might be a, you know, a player. In what type of games you use soils? In what type of sports you use clays, soils or what? Number 2, yes. Uh, okay. See, my connotation is more on the turf. Very nice, good. In lawn tennis, how many types of tennis you have? Varieties, why? How many types of quotes you have? Yes, now you could link the subject with the practice. Are you getting the point? So why do they have these four grand slams? Why? They want to test whether this guy is going to be a winner on all type of turfs or not. Remember, so you have clay courts, clear? You have grass courts also. Which one is grass courts? Huh? Wimbledon, excellent, you are right. So that means depending upon what the sports you are playing and what are the requirements. You can play with this material, you can define the material. Is this okay? Football is not a very direct answer. It should be either mostly tennis where the ball impinges and then you must have studied in your mechanics course, reverse English, forward English, all those things have you heard or not? Elder Resnick. 10 plus 2 physics, no? Swing, why the ball swings, late cutter, in cutter, all these things are derived by the material properties. If I can control over here, everything, the response is going to be different. 
understand? So, it is nothing but the engineering properties which I have to modulate and the pitches are ready. So, tennis courts is a good idea, uh, your cricket pitches are very good idea, anything else apart from that? Basketball not going to be of much because see basketball you do not impinge the ball intentionally on the ground when you are playing of course for bounce and all is fine. So, anyway, so this is there, agriculture is It is a big profession, is it not? Farmers of the country, how do they check soil? They do not have a laboratory. What do they do? They will just touch the soil, they will rub it, add some water, again rub it, smell it and they will tell you whether this type of soil is good for this particular produce or not. Why? Why they are so experienced? I mean they must be checking some attributes. For them the requirement of the soil is different, fine. Suppose I am a florist, you know what is florist? The guy who is producing flowers, they are very particular about you know a type of soil which should be used for creating a certain breed of flowers, it is a big business. Apart from this, Any other profession? Quickly tell me, what are the other professions where you use soils? Sorry? Yeah. Construction, okay. So, we will keep ourselves, we will place ourselves engineering, oh, electronics, not in the soil form. So, it is extracted form of let us say silica, which is one of the constituents of the soils. So, I will not put it in this matrix because of this reason, alright. We are talking about right now natural systems and professions, okay. But yeah, answer is good. At nano level, we can think of, yes. Any other profession? Sorry? Mining will come in engineering, SNT, let us say science and technology. Beauticians, skin care. Where do they use soils? You never bothered about it, no? Bhargavi. Bhargavi. Yes, yes please. Talc. Okay. Nice. So, 